so this is the uh, entrance road to Fort Ticonderoga. I have to do kind of a whirlwind trip. Just passing through the area and thought I'd better stop. right on this promontory of land with the river wrapping around it. Good vantage point, probably why they built a fort here. Right here at Fort Ticonderoga, um, I'd said the river earlier when I was starting to look at the fort, and that's actually Lake Champlain, part of it, a small part of it. Um, on the other side there is Vermont, and this is Mount Defiance there, which was a good overlook and I'm going to swing by there real quickly after I leave the fort. So as it points out here, Lake Champlain is 125 miles long and flows northward into the Richelieu River, which in turn flows into the St. Lawrence River. From Ticonderoga, the lake stretches another 25 miles south to its end near the present-day Whitehall, New York. During the 18th century, the rivers and lakes of the region served as the interstate highways of the time. Whoever controlled the waterways controlled the surrounding territory. Lake Champlain served as a key link in the network of rivers and lakes connecting Quebec City to the north with New York City to the south. Fort Ticonderoga guards the portage to Lake George, which is located four miles away on the other side of Mount Defiance. The primary travel route south from Ticonderoga was to Portage or cross over land to Lake George, then sailed the 32 mile length of the lake and portaged 12 miles overland to the Hudson River at Fort Edward. And Mount Defiance, which we're going to visit later, rises about 900 feet. During the American Revolution, British forces managed to place artillery atop the mountain, which put it in a commanding position over the fort. Anyway, since time is short,
the name Ticonderoga, according to this sign, is a corruption of an Indian word meaning a place between two waters, an acknowledgement of its location. His grandfather, Ron, Kind of the drawbridge that doesn't entirely draw, but a little piece of it does. Original name of the fort was Fort Carillon, built by the French in 1755 through 1758. General James Abercrombie defeated by the Marquis de Montcalm in 1758. The fort was captured by Sir Geoffrey Amherst in 1759 and renamed Fort Ticonderoga, captured by Ethan Allen in 1775, captured by Sir John Burgoyne in 1777, Colonel John Brown repulsed by General Powell in 1777. It appears this is not a national park or monument, it appears that it's owned by the state of New York. wonder if these cannons were that colorful. The green maybe, but the, the nice blue mounts seems a little off. Maybe it's authentic. I know it did say that, but yeah, you know, I don't. 
Behind this wall with the cannons is uh, the building that was used as the soldiers' barracks. Center now. I'm not sure what it was used for originally. And that would have been the officers' barracks over there. This is the back side of the soldiers' barracks. See, there's some things here which are not period. Captain's chair from USS Ticonderoga. It's a bit of a stretch.
Islands is the kind of place that really you need to be on a tour because so many of the things are not explained by signage. This is kind of a drawbridge here. This first section of the bridge looks like it can pivot up. face because I was looking into the distance while walking on this stuff.
pretty new. This is a, a modern building made to look old and basically set up with the little theaters and things like that, but it's not even pretending to have any vintage look about it on the inside. Apparently most of the time they have reenactors out here doing various things, but unfortunately I'm here during their lunch break. The place kind of goes quiet suddenly.
And that's about all the time I have for this quick walkthrough. We'll have just enough time to run up to the top of Mount Defiance across there. There are a lot of other sites around here. There's a thing called the King's Garden. There's old landmarks showing where various battles and foxholes and places where the French built earthen works. There's remnants of old huts and things scattered all around here. One could definitely spend a lot more time, not just as a whirlwind tour of the fort proper, as I've done. The road up Mount Defiance is actually a toll road. There's a kiosk at the uh, automatically raising uh, gate that'll take some sorts of payment. But if you go into Fort Ticonderoga first as part of the entry fee there, they give you a token which you can then put into the kiosk in place of cash payment and as they point out this road is not considered suitable for RVs, campers, anything with a trailer, pretty much just cars. It's pretty steep. narrow. seatbelt properly before I went through the toll gate. And that's why the beeper keeps beeping at me. This is pretty steep here. I'm glad it's paved at least. Wouldn't be fun if it was gravel.
it's gonna be a real short stay up here. I have, according to my schedule, all of five minutes to be up here. I can push it a little bit, but it won't be a long stay. What is somebody pedaling up this hill? There's a lot of places where it's single track like this. You have to go around some tree or something and then rejoin the main road. signage says no uh, campers or RVs. Somebody drove one up here, one here anyway. I guess they made it so far. See what they have going down that steep hill. Hope their brakes are good. view and that is Vermont on the other side of the water there's the fort way down there lively discussion amongst people up at the overlook about whether the lake here is Lake Champlain or Lake George. They say they're locals and that that's Lake George, but the signage at the fort and Wikipedia and everything else I could pull up says the fort is at the very south end of Lake Champlain and that there is a portage required to get from there to Lake George. I didn't see any place down there where it looked like you had to portage anything. So, something was amiss. But it is time for me to hit the road. I came up here after part one of my mini train odyssey on the Amtrak Lakeshore Limited yesterday. And now I need to get back to Albany to catch the second leg of my train trip.
nice view of the fort way down there. Gate. Returning from Ticonderoga to Albany and Rensselaer to catch my uh, second train of my mini Odyssey. Take the exit on the right to I-787 South toward Albany. I'm now kind of on the north end of Albany and I'm switching over from I-87 to line, 787. Take right to I-787 South. Gonna go south into downtown. Be in the right lane. Albany, and then from there cross over to Rensselaer, which is where the Amtrak station is. Now, just a few. 
few miles of this. Exit 3A, on the right, to US 9 South. south. In one half mile, take the ramp on the right toward Broadway. on the right toward Broadway. At the end of the street, turn left. Left at the traffic light, then take the first right. Turn right on Parrick Street. bridge up over the tracks. There's the train station right there. Turn right on East Street. Arriving at 525 East Street on the right, 